Good evening, sir. What can I get you to drink? Yeah, well, honestly, I'm looking for something serious. I've been thinking about it, and it's time to step up my manly man-man drinking game. Well, we have some great whiskeys that I... Ooh, marshmallow-flavored vodka. I'll have that one. Do you live, eat, and sleep in the hotel industry? Looking to brush up on your game? You've come to the right place. Welcome to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. Hey everybody, welcome to the No Vacancy Podcast with me, your host, Glenn Hausman. As always, I'm absolutely super stoked to have you here with me each and every week as we educate and empower and entertain every single one of you out there. Remember, you got one life blaze on, and this show is all about helping you maximize opportunity and success through listening to what other folks in the hotel industry are doing. And today, we've got another great show for you. All right, I know you're probably going to say, hey, Glenn, why do you say every single week is going to be a great show? Because I fundamentally believe that every single show that we put out here at the uh, No Vacancy News Network is absolutely spectacular, and I am having so much fun doing all of these shows out there. Man, this has been such a great time. This past week, I was uh, back in Phoenix after uh, a week over at the lodging conference. I came home for a couple of days and went back to uh, Phoenix to host a uh, customer advisory board meeting, and that was a ton of fun for me. I don't get to do too many of those, though uh, if any of you out there want to have me host those kind of events for you, don't be shy. Reach out to me. You can find me, Glenn, at rouse.media. All right, shameless plug there. I couldn't help myself, but um, it was a lot of fun because I got to um, spend the day talking with um, you know a whole bunch of hotel industry professionals really understand what they're thinking and how it relates to um, the the uh, the product and service that we were uh, talking about which I can't really you know share uh, too much here because it was a private uh, event but it was great talking to these people really getting to see again what hoteliers are thinking about every single day you know I go to events like the uh, the lodging conference for example where I was at two weeks ago and you get one sort of perspective, but when you do something like a customer advisory board meeting, or if you do something like uh, somebody's annual um, hospitality convention, I think you get a very different point of view about how things are going. You get a little bit more of that unvarnished truth. I think there's uh, a lot less of the uh, rosiness associated with it, right? Those rose-colored glasses have a tendency to come off, and you hear the uh, the straight dope from what's going on um, out there, and that's what this kind of meeting was uh, all about finding out what was really happening in the hospitality industry and how uh, this particular company could make sure that they are on track to meet the needs of uh, hoteliers in in the future. So what am I uh, learning uh, about the uh, the future? Well, I'm not going to tell you because you're going to have to listen to all these great interviews here to find out exactly what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's true. So next week, I'm going to be uh, going down, or this coming week, really. I'm going to be heading down to uh, Atlantic City to speak to the good folks over at Hospitality International, where I'm going to be delivering a keynote speech on the state of the industry. What are the opportunities that you have? What are the challenges that are, are coming along? What to do about it? But I'm also going to be talking mostly about how to... Uh, help keep your staff engaged, how to keep that staff, uh, you know, uh, there at your hotel, because as you know, we're having a lot of issues with labor in this business and other ways that you could spend a little bit money to save a whole lot more in your hotel operations, because we're definitely moving to an era where you've got to think about how much things are costing you in order to make business. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to talk about those particular issues. So I'm looking forward to speaking to that great group. And the week after that, I got another, uh, job with a fund management company. And the week after that, I'll be uh, going down to talk to our good friends at Almo. And speaking of Almo, I want to make sure that you make Almo Hospitality your go-to partner to simplify FFNE deployments for the guest room and beyond. They have industry-leading brands. They have the latest. They follow the latest in hospitality trends and also find distinctive new-to-market brands. So coupled with their specialized business development and hospitality-dedicated sales team, Almo Hospitality will do you right. Check them out at almohospitality.com or hospitality.almoproav.com. Love these guys. They've been a great partner of mine, and I know they would be a fantastic partner for you and help you save money and make your business run even more efficiently, which I'm telling you fits really into the speeches that I'm doing on the road, such as the one I'm going to be delivering to Hospitality International this coming week. It really is an issue about uh, saving money out there for operators, but what about for those folks that still want to develop hotels? Well, this interview that we have coming up uh, 
straight away is with uh, Peter Burke of uh, PMZ Capital. And we talk about how interest rates are at historic levels of lowness. That means money is cheap, baby, cheap, baby, cheap. And you guys can leverage that opportunity to develop more hotels. So we get into that. We get into some of the reasons why and um, what you out there can do about it. And then our second interview in the show, I'm going to be speaking with Mr. Uh, Jeff Andrews, who uh, runs World Hotels, which, as you know, a couple of few months ago, uh, teamed up with Best Western to create an even bigger company. And I speak to Jeff about why the heck they did it, what the benefit is for them, what the benefit is for Best Western, and how it's changing the entire makeup of that. That company. So I'm excited to share that particular interview. If you haven't subscribed to our show, be sure to text the word hotel to 66866 to get our Sunday night newsletter. And I'd love for you to give us a uh, Big uh, likes and thumbs up on our pages on LinkedIn, our pages on Facebook. Subscribe to our podcast wherever you like to get our shows. We've, of course, got this No Vacancy Show. There's Checking In with Anthony and Glenn, the Hotel Design Podcast, the Business Hotels Podcast, the Hotel Tech Podcast, and our great video series as well, which you can catch by finding me online, either at Glenn Hausman or on No Vacancy Sites. All right, so as you know, this has been all been wonderful, but now I'm on my way, and we are going to get into this interview with uh, PMZ Capitals, uh, Peter Burke, and then right after the commercial break, Jeff Andrews of World Hotels. Thanks, as always, for listening. I know I'm a little out of it this morning. I've been running all over the country. It is the thick of conference season, and I am absolutely pooped. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Until uh, conference season is over, but I am going to try. And if I don't, well, at least I gave it the best shot that I had. Thanks for listening. And uh, in the meantime, let's go right to our interview with Peter Burke of PMZ. Hey, everybody. Glenn Hausman here of the No Vacancy News Network and the No Vacancy Podcast. Today, doing a special uh, video podcast with Mr. Peter Burke of PMZ Realty. Peter, I got to tell you, I've known you. You've been around here in this business. I've been around this business. We've kind of been floating around each other. This is going to be our first real big conversation, I think. I'm very excited. It is. Thank you for fitting me into your busy schedule. Yeah, for sure. You can pull the arm closer to you if it'll make you a little bit more comfortable. So, you know, what I'm really curious about, Peter, is what's going on right now in your world how do you see get capital getting out there? What are people thinking about and what are you doing out there in the market? Yeah, right now we are at historic lows for interest rates. Right. So our firm is really busy. Good we have you. what we call fence sitters, which are people who don't have to transact. <laughs> right. And those people are jumping off the fence and calling us right and left. People that we've talked to for years. I, oh, you know, just I'm, I'm happy with my local bank. Now all of a sudden mm-hmm. the capital markets are so receptive. To uh, you know, to fixed rate financing, right? That uh, it's, been, it's been really active. Why right. are they so receptive? Because they're able to lock in general generationally low interest rates. Mm-hmm. I mean, right now doing loans at three and a half to four percent is lower than it's ever been. We closed a courtyard loan last week mm-hmm. at three point five percent. That set a record for the uh, lowest for a full leverage loan, the lowest interest rate. Uh, wow, that, that's been done. That- it's just, it's just. It was, it was, you know, it was, it, it was a strong sponsor, and it was timing, and it got done. And uh, so, we're how really do you, proud how do it. you, how do you do it all? How does it all come together? Because I'm like, uh, I, I know the financial business just enough to be dangerous, right? right. So, um, if I want to invest in a hotel, what do I get out of you guys exactly? How does it all be put together? How do you make me a happy owner to be? Right. So we're an intermediary, and the job right. of job is an, of an intermediary is to find the right checkbook for the right deal. Right. So we have relationships with lots of owners, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and but on the other side, we we uh, we call on owners, and on the other side, we have our relationships. We sit in New York City. We have relationships with lots of capital sources, debt funds, insurance companies, credit companies, uh, pension funds who provide the capital. So somebody comes to us and says, hey, you know, I got this hotel, uh, you know, it just opened or I got this hotel, it's it's closed or I need a cash out refi. Any any type of financing scenario you can think of. And it's our job to think, all right, well, who do who's in our Rolodex that would be appropriate for this? Interesting. So we package the deal. We put it together in a manner that makes sense for the appropriate transaction. And we go out to the capital markets and we present it. We said, hey, we got this deal. And we get we get a bunch of quotes and we present what we call a menu of options, kind of like a Chinese food menu. Right, yeah. So here we go. If you do it fixed, it looks like this. If you do it floating, it looks like that. And we present options and we sit with our clients 
and we uh, we give them options. We and we you know talk. We work collaboratively with them, and we're, we're speaking to them every day, right? And figure out what works best for the uh, for the deal. That's pretty uh, awesome. So you're you're really kind of like a matchmaker. Yes, right. We are a matchmaker. Yep. I mean that's that's the job of an of an intermediary. That's uh, that's that's pretty uh, pretty cool. So. With with interest rates at this rate, we already have a really robust uh, new construction pipeline. And how do you think the interest rates that you're seeing right now is going to wind up affecting all the deals that we're seeing out there in the industry? You're on the uh, the ground level. So how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, right now, what we're seeing is a lot of people who want to start construction loans, right. taking those construction loans off their lender's books and putting them into the capital market. So mm. it does two things. When you take a loan off a of lender's books, it, it takes it off of your balance sheet. So a construction loan on a borrower's balance sheet is a contingent liability, which when you go for a construction loan, the more contingent liabilities you have, the harder it is to get a construction loan. Right. So that's number one. And number two, they're cash out loans. It provides you equity for a uh, for that equity for the new construction loan. Excellent. I'm looking it, for uh, I'm looking for a, a sellout loan where I uh, I can do something and get paid a lot of money. <laughs> right. Well, with, with your good looks, you yeah. could go you could go into television. Yeah, that's a, that's a reason why I'm on a podcast. <laughs> uh, that's excellent. So that's really uh, fascinating uh, to me. Um, your your whole business. It's been fun, really, uh, learning about it and and how you see things going forward. So, what advice would you give somebody that's looking to I don't know refinance or make a purchase for the first time right now? Yeah, I mean, there's no time like the present. My feeling is that the economy is going to remain strong, at least through the election. Right. I think the current administration is going to do, not to talk politics. Right. Because um, that would be dangerous. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of talking politics. Right, but I, I think we're going to be good until the election after that. Uh, you know, who knows? Um, so so do it now. I mean, there's as you were saying, there's, there's not a lot of oversupply that we're seeing. We're seeing local banks still pretty right. active on the lending front. Right. So with historic low rates, I mean, just about any deal will work. Even marginal deals, again, with 3 or 4% money, and if you can lock that financing in so it doesn't float and change, will make even marginal deals work. Wow, that's great. Well, I got a great marginal deal or the uh, the Hausman Resort Pool Club and Smokehouse at, uh, in Smithtown, New York. Maybe you can help me with a, a refinancing there. I do have four rooms, bedrooms that are uh, that I rent every night to my wife and kids, so that uh, that works out pretty well. So I'm going to talk a uh, talk a little deal with uh, Peter after we get off here. Peter, how can we find you at PMZ Realty Capital? Okay, you can go to our website pmzcapital.com or email me at burke b e r k at pmzcapital.com. Happy to talk to you. Beautiful. Well, I actually had fun talking about money, so that was a whole lot of fun. I want to thank Peter for being here. We'll be back with another video edition of the, of the No Vacancy Podcast coming at you real soon. Thanks for watching. Have a question for your host, Glenn? Tweet him now at Traveling Glenn. No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, Glenn here. So listen, a while back, I told you about the Red Collection. You know, Red Roof Soft brand that was developed after comprehensive research. It's what today's traveler truly desires. Well, offering you a great opportunity to affordably expand your portfolio in the heart of the cities you love. For a limited time, that opportunity is miles beyond affordable because Red Roof is offering free royalties for five years to qualified franchisees completing an application by December 31st, 2019. That's December 31st, 2019. Don't sit around. Get it done. The Red, Roof, the Red Collection is a fast-growing group of upper-mid-scale unique hotels, each inspired by their city's vibe and culture. What's more, every property has its own distinctive name, customized property enhancement plan, and brand standards based on consumer wants rather than design mandates. That's the way it should be. And because all this is backed by Red Roof, well, you'll gain the advantage of their owner-operator perspective as well as loyalty re rewards programs with more than 3 million members. And that just happens to be the richest in class and least expensive for franchisees. Plus, you'll be working with a company with a franchisee satisfaction rate of 90%. How about that? To learn more about, get this, five years free royalty, five years royalty free with the Red Collection, contact Matt Hostetler, Red Roof Senior VP of Development and Franchising today. I mean, right now, stop walking the dog, stop running on that treadmill, stop doing what you're doing, and call 713 Five seven six seven four two six or email mhostetler at redroof.com. 
That's M-H-O-S-T-E-T-L-E-R at redroof.com. Thanks for listening. Back to the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the No Vacancy Podcast with me, your host, Glenn Hausman. Today, I'm excited because I'm with Mr. Jeff Andrew of World Hotels. And if you guys don't know who World Hotels are, is... You are certainly going to find out now. Jeff, how are you, sir? I am very well, Glenn. It's very nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it is very nice to, uh, to to meet you. So the news of the day is about six months ago, uh, you guys teamed up with, uh, mm-hmm. with Best Western Hotels and Resorts and really are creating a very powerful, exciting, unified type of organization. Yep. But I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Okay. I want to make sure that folks here, that my predominantly, you know, I get a 85% of the audience from the United States of America and... Uh, we have a tendency to think we're we are the world, yeah, but there's I know. A, right? But yeah. there's a whole lot of world around there, and they may not be as familiar with world hotels as they should be. That's right. It's a big world out there, right? Uh, and we are world hotels, right? So we're here to talk about it. Uh, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Gl- um, the world hotels has been around for fifty years, right? So next year we actually do celebrate our fifty year uh, anniversary. So we've got a lot of heritage behind us. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, world hotels is a collection of. Let me use the old language. Uh, let's say four and five star, four and a right. half and five star hotels. Mm-hmm. So very much uh, driving for the upper uh, upscale right. and the luxury hotels. And how would you say that in new language? Oh, in the new, <laughs> well, the new language is the upper upscale yeah, and luxury. Right. We, we, we follow the STR, right? Yes, everybody, of course. Everybody follows that track. Yeah, everybody but the consumer. No, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is why I go back to star ratings. <laughs> right, exactly. tend to understand that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, right. So, uh, but it, it's kind of a cool, like, portfolio of properties, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So we are classically, uh, if you like, a, a, an affiliation brand. Right. Uh, which means that our hotels are not owned or managed by us, but they are members. They come in for reservation, sales, marketing, support, mm-hmm. and all those good things. Right. Um, and they are very beautiful, unique properties. That's the whole point. And right. that's, that's the great thing about the independent industry. So, so you know, what's happened here is that uh, Best Western, which is now styled as BWH Hotel Group. Right. Because Best Western is, is the brand, but the, yep. the group now has multiple tiers. So we have come in to essentially be the upper upscale and luxury side of, uh, of the BWH hotel group. Right. So uh, that is absolutely beautiful. I want to get into a little before questions, right, then we'll okay. get into the deal, and then we'll get into the after. Right. So what appealed to you? What appealed to them? How did this thing start to come together? All right. Well, what appealed to us, um, basically, if you look at the industry right now, there is a huge demand for independent properties. Right. There's no question about that. The internet has driven tremendous growth and interest in unique independent products. The challenge that all of us have in the independent sector is how do you get the kind of scale you need to right. really be heard on an international stage? Mm-hmm. We're a global company. Uh, but at the end of the day, being a collection of 300 or even, let's face it, 500, mm-hmm. if you're on your own, right. it's not an easy place to work. There's some pretty big players out there. Yeah. So how do you how do you combine there for the autonomy that our hotels like and love and want to run their own hotels yep. and our ability to sell them properly in the market, but have the kind of resources to really make that happen? So from our perspective... That's where this deal came from. Right. So this is this is a uh, a long-standing affiliation brand, sort of being dropped into yep. a major top ten hotel chain. What did BWC in this? Well, of course, for them, this was a way of quickly establishing right. a major presence mm-hmm. in the luxury and upper upscale market. Yep. You know, if you go out there and try and launch your own soft brand, which many hotel groups have done, uh, let's face it, yeah, there's right, plenty out there. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, <laughs> there's, oh, there's another one. one. Yeah, 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 just right here this week. <laughs> yeah. Um, it takes time. So here's a perfect out-of-the-box solution right. that immediately positions BWH in multiple tiers uh, and gives them a footprint and a presence that um, you know obviously gives them a, a, right. a head start. Yeah, now I started to... Uh you know, smell synergy the second you said membership, right? right? So yeah, it's yeah. not just categories that seem to align and help build, uh, you know, a stronger portfolio for both of you, but it seems to have the same sort of ethos behind Absolutely. it as well. Yeah, yeah, spot on. Thank you for answering yeah. that question for me. That's yeah. true. <laughs> Sometimes no, I get a little carried away, Jeff. Yeah, no, that's fine. Let me ask the questions. Yeah. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. There is a, there is definitely a, philosoph- uh, a philosophical view that is the same in, uh, uh, right. in, in terms of the importance of the members, the voice of the members. We've always valued and cherished the the, the, the members that we have, the owners that we have.
we have. They right. all have differing views. It's fantastic. And we've just come into an organization that uh, is exactly the same way. So, yeah, it's terrific. Philosophically, we're all aligned. It's well, great. I give credit to uh, David Kong and Ron Paul and his team Absolutely. for finding a really creative way to make them a, a much stronger force to be reckoned with now in all aspects of the market. Absolutely. I mean, if it, you know, with, with the uh, the introduction of several brands now within the with the right. the BWH uh, portfolio, from sure stay down in the economy segment, with us now up at the upper upscale of luxury, it basically opens up the whole marketplace for the group, which I think is terrific for everybody. So it's a win win. Yeah. How does um, uh, for example, like the uh, the BW Premier and what you're doing kind of complement each other, overlap? If, if yeah, if at there's all. a there's a little you know at this stage there's obviously a little yeah. bit of overlap at the right. at the BW Premier collection uh, level and our what we call our distinctive collection. Right. Uh, but our target over the next uh, you know over the next several years, but starting right now, is to really start to drive harder for us and our elite and luxury collections. Right. So the goal ultimately is that there will be clear water between the, uh, the right. different brands. Yeah, and I'm one of those uh, people that I know you say clear water. I think that when you say clear water between brands, I think that's more for the developer's point of view, not necessarily from the customer point of view, uh, I, in, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think that's probably true. It, it, may, it puts the house in order. Right. It just makes it, it, makes yeah. it an easier uh, strategic uh, uh, explanation. But yeah, as far as the customers can, and I, I mean, one of the things I often say is that with our collection, I, I have said many times we are a collection of 300 brands. Right. Yep. Because every single hotel sees the value in its own, uh, its own name, in its own place, in its own market. And we very much treat, you know, we've historically treated our hotels that way. We, we, we want to, we want to say if you're the Royal Garden in London, right. that is the, that is your brand and we will help. We can support with the World Hotels name, but actually we want to carry you as well. Yeah. It's fascinating that you've been doing this for 50 years because mm -hmm. when, uh, the Americans started introducing that concept with, uh, you know, a competing brand to, uh, to Best Western about 10 years ago, I think it, they really made it seem like it was a brand new idea that was uh, out there. And everyone else seemed to kind of jump on that bandwagon, too. Well, you know, I think the space that we occupy, and there yeah. are obviously other organizations that do uh, independent collections. I think, you know, they're, they're there, and there's certainly a couple of them that are U.S.-based and right. have been around for many years. I don't need to name names. You know yeah, who they yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think... I, just, I like to, you know, keep it all positive and not mention other, <laughs> not, not mention other brands when well, I'm talking I'm with Ron. I'm not going down right? that road. Yeah. You can do, you can edit yeah. as much as yeah. you want later. Oh, don't worry. I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to edit and, and, like, totally change everything you're saying to oh, make it look fine. horrible. That's yeah. fine. Can you change my name as well <laughs> and uh, my boss doesn't find out? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think it is really intriguing at the moment the way the industry's going. And right. I, I think we've got a real opportunity now for our hotel to benefit from the kind of resources and pockets, program sales, rewards right. program. You know, all of this stuff is now being badged as world hotels for the, for our benefit. Right. So my sort of message, if you like, to the market is we get, get the best of both worlds. Yeah. You know, be independent, but at the same time, be able to draw on the, the strength of a, of a huge brand. Right. And totally. Okay. That's, a, that's the same type of line that I hear all the time. Um, whenever I'm at industry conferences and events, when it comes to, to soft branding, it's really a team up of the best of both worlds. It is. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little yeah. dubious about some of these so-called soft yeah. brands. Of course and, you are. And quite how autonomous they, they really are. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to think we're the authentic, uh, the authentic thing. We've, yeah. we've, we've inherited and brought in that culture from, as I say, 50 years of history. Yeah. That's so amazing. it's not that easy. I don't, I, I would suggest to you it's not that easy to create a truly autonomous environment. Um, if yeah. you are creating just another brand that fits in with your, right big yeah, machine i, I get it know. so how did all this come together do they call you do you call them do you uh have a meaningful bump in on the street and uh, fall in yeah, love my people called their people yeah. <laughs> we kind of we kind of got it on no i mean it was um well it kind of was like that really yeah. Yeah, it was just mutual phone calls going right you know we we feel now we're in a position where we need the scale right um david uh, kong is someone who we'd been talking to a little bit on and off in mm -hmm. In previous years, and he, smart guy, knew yeah. what he wanted in terms of he's, top end of the market. He's really terrific CEO. So uh, you know, I, I, I think the as you've said, the synergies were obvious. Yeah, but for for sure. How long did it take for it once you started having meaningful conversations? How long did something like this oh, take to get long. together? Oh, not long. Actually, surprisingly quickly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been through a few of these now, and this was the fastest. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, there was cool. a, yeah. I mean, I'm talking. 
uh, a few months. Wow, that's pretty. Not, that you know, really, really. It wasn't extended fast. at all. Right. I mean, I can't get anybody to do things in a in well, a few months. Well, that's let alone, right. You know, right. A, a deal like that. Da- David was keen to get it done. Uh, yeah. And so were we. So there was goodwill on both sides to just get Damn. the transaction. I love that. But what is it like the process now of integrating everything? What are some of the opportunities? Oh, some of the challenges? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's always there's always bumps in the yeah, road. Of course. And, uh, but you, you know, I, I I'm very much a glasses half full kind of guy right. so at the moment i'm a kid in a in a in a candy store just opening up all these boxes going oh i like that oh i'll have yeah. one of those oh two of those please yeah um <laughs> so i you know the opportunities are definitely outweighing the right. uh, the challenges if you like of any integration and there right. are challenges of course there are of course but uh you know especially I, I, when it comes to some of that technology stuff and you're talking about loyalty uh, programs and exactly yeah. technology because marketing i mean it, it runs the whole uh, the whole gamut every every discipline every right. area of the business needs to be looked at tested and fully integrated but we're moving on really fast i mean we've now got uh integrated sales we're now we've now already rebadged the rewards program that's going out wow that's pretty quick yeah so there's a lot of things already moving no that's yeah. uh, that's uh, that's pretty impressive so uh how does uh, how do you, you keep your role going as CEO of that division and and all of that? How does, well, yeah, I mean it's still my responsibility yeah. to make sure World Hotels as a brand is so developed. It, and, so and, it's kind of like I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's just coming to me because like uh, Best Western has CEOs in like different regions, so it's almost kind of a different thing. Except your region is the world with this particular portfolio. Yeah, I guess so. Right. I guess so. I mean, it's it's a kind of I suppose if you. Um, Put it in more formal terms, corporate terms. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost a brand president. Yes, I understand. Type yeah. of role, mm-hmm. but ultimately, it's my responsibility to make sure that the brand is positioned correctly in the market and on the development side to make sure it's it's growing in the target markets that we want. So, where are you folks typically uh, located? Half the portfolio is in Europe, right? Uh, and about two thirds of the rest is in Asia, and mm-hmm. then the Americas makes up the rest. So, so actually, one of the big benefits for us in this whole transaction is the opportunity now in North America. That's exactly. We, we've never Never had a huge footprint here. We've right. always had, you know, a fairly strong in New York, other gateway cities. But I just see the whole market opening up now with right. uh, with the networking, the strength, the development team mm-hmm. that are here in North America. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm a New York guy, right? You okay. know. So, uh, uh, what name a hotel in New York? That's part of your question. Ah, the Kimberly is, ah, a, is a beautiful hotel. Yes, that's yes, a yes. Long, long standing member of ours. Sanctuary mm-hmm. Hotel, beautiful, oh, cool. Right, right, right. Right on, cool. So, yeah, you know, th- those are the kind of hotels that we that we uh, are looking for. Um, Anything that's got, I mean, if, if they're names, if there's something special right. about them, I, I think it's really important this, this, in this market that you've got to have something uh, iconic, historic, special, something that says, I'm somewhere I want to talk about. Right. I'm somewhere I want to go and put on social media. Those are the kind of hotels yeah, you yeah, want to this. Uh, yeah, I- exactly. And uh, I love those kinds of hotels. And the two that you mentioned that I know are really fantastic products that are out there. How do you get the membership to go along with something like this? Because they really dictate the decision making process. So uh-huh. how, how does, how does that whole process? Well, you persuade. Work I mean, you, yeah. you know, we're not, we're not in a world, in a world of membership. You're not out there to, nobody's dictating, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. You, you, you can, you can order them, but. They ain't gonna follow. And I've, to- I've always seen like um, sometimes it's difficult to get some of the things that you know is done right because you're dealing with all those different. Voices. Well, that's right. That's yeah. right. So you got to play. You got to play it carefully. But at the same time, um, it's persuasion. It's right. encouraging. But you know, we've just spent uh, ten minutes talking about the opportunities yeah. that come with this transaction. So. We, we we have smart people that that are run our hotels and they can see what the benefits are going to be long term. So, you know, yeah, it, it's 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 not a it's not a huge uh, challenge from that perspective. So, what are you most excited about about this whole thing? Oh, I just think the opportunities for growth, Glenn. Right. I mean, let's face it. Um, I, I think we can quickly get from three hundred hotels to somewhere around six hundred over the next five years. Mm-hmm. I don't think, and maybe even less time than that. So I mean, you're going to be a, so you're going to be able to plug into their uh, development group Absolutely. as well, right? Yeah. So Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that's what I'm keen to see. Right, yeah. so you get a guy who, let, you know, in, in uh, the classic Best Western, we'll, we'll call it for the sake of this conversation, that maybe has California as a territory. Um, they may get, uh, they may spot some opportunities that fit uh-huh. well within your portfolio and then can help bring there, that together. There are plenty of owners within the Best Western uh, right. uh, family yeah. mm-hmm. that have properties that they don't necessarily want to put a BW. Oh, uh, that's right. Sign on. That makes a lot of sense. So you know they have other hotels. Up until now, uh, BW has not had the opportunity to mm-hmm. uh, uh, offer them anything at, at the higher end of the market. Right now they can. Yeah. That's so cool. I, you know, we, we we have a guy in uh, uh, in North America, uh, mm-hmm. Greg Habib, who's an extremely good high end 
developer, so he's focused full time on World Hotels. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, under Brad LeBlanc and his team yep. here in uh, in North America for BW. Uh, he's going to find. He's going to unearth stuff, and together we're going to. Uh, you know, I think we're going to find a lot of opportunities. Right. Yeah. I just think it's great for uh, the guys on the development side of the business because they have you know you know more ammunition in, in order to go out to the to the market and uh, and convince people to join the family. Plus, Correct. I think it's great for a lot of these hotels that haven't joined a system yet that feel like this is going to be the right opportunity i think so i mean look i mean we all know we're 10 years into a seven-year cycle right yes <laughs> and so we're all feeling a little bit uncomfortable about right. this so it's not about who's successful now yes it's about have you put the right things in place for when the storms come because we know they're going to come we just don't know when right so uh, it, and uh, when things are good when there's a rising tide all boats float right but when the tide starts to come back in mm-hmm what are you going to do? Right. You've got to make sure you've got the structures in place, the support in place. I think a lot of independent hotels that have enjoyed a fantastic time for the last many years are going to find as, the, as things start to flatten out, they're going to need that support. So I think there is a big opportunity from hotels that right now are maybe just doing a basically plug and play right. connectivity solution. They're going to need the kind of sales and marketing that we can provide. And I suppose you guys, you know, once you plug in, once all these hotels start to uh, get more accustomed to the new relationship, they'll be able to tap into probably uh, training tools and other types of oh, solutions that, that are already yeah, there, right? Absolutely, already. I yeah. mean, those things are that's already awesome. available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did you get involved in the hotel business? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, I kind of fell into it. Yeah, uh, yeah I, don't I, we all? Yeah, I know. I don't, I wanna, how does that happen? Yeah. I, I, did a, I did a business degree, and uh, for my internship, I just happened to end up at a, a little company called Utel International, which... Uh, uh -huh. Doesn't doesn't exist anymore. Got no. well, consumed into the Pegasus yep. uh, group. Jeez, that was a ago. long time ago. Already. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm older than I look. <laughs> I, mean, I, I hate to tell you that. Uh, but no, and and once you know, once you taste this industry, you just stay with it, right? right I yeah, mean, it's just a great place to be. Yeah, but yeah. It was. I mean, I, like many, I'm an accidental, but. Uh, so, yeah, so how did you get on the hotelier side? What was that journey like, making it up to, to CEO of World Hotels? Well, it's, I don't know. Maybe that was accidental as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, listen, I've, I've spent most of my career working with independent hotels. Right. I mean, Utel was, was exactly yes, that. Right. So coming to World Hotels six years ago was almost a homecoming in terms of, um, you know, what the, the kind of challenges that we were facing. Uh, the kind of hotels we were dealing with, the different characters around the world, the global nature of the business. So it's very familiar to me. Right. So I, I, I think I've always been very passionate about independence. I think, I think it has to be promoted. I think mm -hmm. we have to make sure that these products that are very individual are protected, nurtured, and thrive and, uh, and, and don't get crushed by the, uh, ultimately by the big groups. It's right. worth saving. So yeah. a, it's a flag we can rally around. Let's put it that way. Yeah, for sure. What are customers looking for today when they seek out an independent hotel experience? Um, I, I think it is something, but I've always said once you start getting to that, that this, the, the, the higher end of the market, right. you, you, there is something there that is, that is special. Mm -hmm. You're looking for something, I think I said earlier, but it's, it's iconic, it's historic. It's, it's some superb service. It's an amazing location, an amazing view. It, it is something that makes you go beyond, oh, my expectations were met. Right. Ah, yeah, so yeah. what? Yeah. You want something you can talk about. So you're talking about the curious traveler. You're talking, mm -hmm. yes, experiential. We can use all those words. But I think there yeah, is I'd a like a, I, I feel like there should be a drinky game out there. Anytime someone uh, says experience, right? But we'd all I be didn't, I didn't down say, I on said the ground. I said experiential. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah. I avoided that one. I, I, <laughs> it's a, it's a vari variance on the same thing. I, I like your quibbling it, over a couple of letters. Look, I mean, the, the important thing is, <laughs> yeah. do you have a product there that gets people excited? Right. Yeah. You know, and, mm -hmm. and that's, what, that's what you want. There's, there's the passion involved. And I love the fact on the hotel side that you've got people who are so proud of these products that they've created. It, that a lot of them are personal visions. Right. And now, you want to see them succeed. Now, I'm a big uh, believer that, at least here in the United States, and my hunch is other places around the world, too, since the Great Recession in the last 10 years, I think customers have really changed. They've gone from that, mm -hmm. um, you know, eschewing materialism for more of the experiential type of travel type it. of thing. I, it again. I know. <laughs> You know, I'm going to save all my shots for the party uh, that we're going to uh, later tonight. But um, what I'm I'm finding is that um, it's probably had to inform the programming of each of these hotels probably a little bit differently than, let's say, even six years ago when you first started with, with them. Yeah, I think, you know, we've got a shifting. I mean, certainly when you start get, talking about luxury, yeah. uh, there is definitely a sense of a shifting definition of what that really means. Right. People, what, what do people really, really value these well, days? I always hear of, time. Time, time, time. Well, it's th there's certainly t time is is definitely an element. Yeah, and the personalization right. thing is certainly something. But but privacy, also privacy. I right. mean, people are looking for Agreed. a refuge. People are looking for an oasis, some, something that where they can be 
uh, feel recognized and special, but kind of step away from the crowd a little bit. That, mm -hmm. That's definitely something that's uh, uh, required. There's a lot more. You've probably seen the trends in intergenerational, multi-generational travel. Mm -hmm. So yep. being able to, to cope with, and in the, we're talking leisure here, obviously. Yeah, obviously. of course. But, um, but even in the business setting, I think there is a, there's a little bit of a relaxation. We're coming, I think we've stepped right. a long way from the old white glove, silver service uh, type. I, you know, I was doing definition. a, uh, we're here at the Logic Conference recording this, and I hosted a general session panel, and as soon as I could, I got rid of the suit and put on something a little bit there more you comfortable. There you go. You know, and, right. And, and, and it doesn't, you don't have to be defined by that anymore. Right. Uh, so all of those things uh, have contributed to a, a little bit of a different view. I'm not completely sold. Um, I have to say, you hear arguments raging back and forth on the whole, um, uh, the demographic thing, the whole millennial, right. Gen X, Gen Y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just think young people get older. I think you get more money. And I also think, when it, <laughs> so, yeah, when one of those things, uh, when you're talking about that and you're trying to shoehorn people in a particular category, that's why I always like to talk about um, psychographics. But the fact of the matter is when you're younger, I keep hearing, they're not brand loyal, they're not brand loyal. I'm like, heck, nobody's brand loyal when no. they're they're really young. It's a time to experiment and figure things Absolutely out. Right. And when you Absolutely get older right. and you have more of that cash flow yes, and you're yes. able to take the experiences, yeah. I think you're – the choices that you make are more refined because you have that experience of a lot of opportunities exactly. to try things in the past, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, I don't. I don't disparage the idea of getting people in early right. and, and, yeah, and enjoying sure. enjoying that experience. But I'm not that the, the blanket idea that this 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 generation is now radically right. different from the last one. I, I, there is one respect in which I th I'd, I'd like to throw into the conversation yeah, where I think I think is going to be. Uh, something that will will come very quickly, uh, and by that I mean certainly over the next five, ten years. But the whole area around sustainability, I do think right. we've got to take more seriously as an industry. Um, well, we're it, trying it, to. Is, I, it would be great if we would take it more seriously as a you know planet. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But, you well, know, let's focus on the be, industry. Yeah, let's narrow it down a little yeah. bit. I mean, it, the younger generations are going to demand right that the, those the, and the, we the, the yeah, and had to go back them. to the whole universe again. But we saw that recently when a lot of the young people around the world were saying, yeah. "Hey, we need to do something about." Yeah, that. they're doing. They're doing it. And they're starting to move. I hope that that's not just a flash in the pan. I don't believe it is. I no. think there is a genuine concern now. So, well, there's also I know what you're going to say, but I want to add to it before you you put that out there. They also want to deal with companies that they feel are ethical. Correct. Right. And that's why I'm saying we we need to get ahead of the game because right. ultimately either the market through demand mm -hmm. or governments through legislation are going to force us into a position where we have to make decisions. Right. Nobody wants to be forced into that. Yeah. You know, I think it is a little bit unfortunate that travel and tourism is is a kind of the poster child for for all the ills of the world well, in terms you, of carbon footprints. For sure. And you know, I'm the guy that flew five thousand miles to get here. So yeah, you know, I'm right. Mr. Hypocrite. Yeah. Here. But I think I, I do think it, it goes beyond climate change. It's all about general sustainability. What are we doing to the environment? Mm -hmm. It's about pollution. It's about single use stuff. It's about um, I, I think it's starting to get into building with recycled materials. I think it's much more about renewable energies, all those sorts of things, more efficient building management. I think that we need to be collectively just getting a more ahead of the game on that before somebody right. forces us. And, and we should be. You know, it's it's in our interest to see the planet sustained. Otherwise, our business is gone anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a, a really good point. So, um, you know, what are your expectations for the for the future? Your hopes, your your dreams here with how this relationship is oh, going to go? I, I think I'm 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 I'm, a, I'm quietly positive on this one. Yeah. Uh, I do think we've got a very unique opportunity. Uh, to do something a little bit different. I think it's an opportunity for independence to get the best of both worlds. Right. As I said earlier. Yep. Uh, and I see many, op in this market especially, I, I can see me spending a lot of time over here in the next few years. But I do, I do think that the, the U.S. Is, is a market that we can do much more business in. That, uh, and be successful. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty positive. That's awesome. Anything else that you uh you feel you need to get out right here on the microphone? Oh no, no. Did you got any beers? Uh, well, I've uh, I just chugged a few of them here because I kept saying that word, <laughs> so I had them. Now I don't anymore. Oh, no, no, I'm I'm almost ready for that. It yeah. feels, feels like a long, I'm jet lagged. Glenn, I'll be honest with you. I so I've been up since about four thirty. So oh. it's been a long day already. I, so. had this, I had the same problem. I woke up at four thirty this morning and just lay in bed yelling. F, F, I'm, why am I awake? Yeah, and you don't even have the excuse of jet lag, do you, right? Uh, yeah, the three-hour time difference is really, <laughs> really you, difficult, right? you know? <laughs> good luck adjusting. Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate that. All right, Jeff, how about a good, uh, a good shameless plug to promote you, promote Best Western, promote anything you want, maybe even your favorite place to buy licorice. I don't know. 
<laughs> oh, no, well, I don't know. I think I think I've did, done all the plugs I need to do. I just want to thank my producer, my family, and everybody else for this opportunity. So, Excellent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you're supposed to you're supposed to thank the Lord and all of that kind of and stuff the Lord too. too. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, all right, Let's excellent. Jets has been so much fun. Thank you. I know. Great, what, great. I, I thank you so much for being here. I want to thank everybody for uh, for you know listening and watching on this edition of the podcast. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to our newsletter. Text the word hotel to six six eight six six. Easy enough. Just the word hotel to six six eight six six. And of course, download the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, all the places where the finer podcasts are. And thank you for watching. And I'll be back next week. That is, unless I decide to go over somewhere to Europe and. Go invest yeah. in a world hotel. Drop me a line. I'll I will. I'll, All right. help, I'll help you out. See you guys next time. Thanks so much for listening to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman, online at Rouse.media, on Twitter at Traveling Glenn, and on Facebook.com slash Glenn.Hausman. We'll catch you next time.